Hello friends, this is Kara Renee with Be Reborn Art and Healing. Today I'm creating in my Dilution 6x9 uh, mixed media journal and here are some of the supplies that I will be using. I didn't end up using that stencil but everything else I did use. Um, and I'm using this beautiful um, uh, tissue paper from Tim Holtz uh, with the little birds on it. Um, the birds don't end up showing in the end but it was still uh, perfect. So, and these are some of the other supplies, my golden fluid acrylics, uh, matte medium, gesso, and um, the TCW uh, light and fluffy modeling paste. And this time I am coming in and reinforcing that spine with a piece of uh, painter's tape um, just to um, keep the mediums and the, the, wet, the wet mediums from seeping through to the other pages and weakening that spine. Um, and here I'm just cutting a couple pieces of parchment paper to um, put between my pages so that I don't get the pages um, on the either uh, the other side of these two pages um, messy. Um, I'm going to be applying all of my papers with my Liquitex matte medium. I do go back and forth between golden and Liquitex, just kind of depends on where I get things on sale. Um, and I do apologize for the um, blurriness there. Um, the ca camera, again, doesn't um, like all the white space. It wants some color to focus on. So uh, that's why I kind of moved that bottle, um, hoping that that would help with the, uh, the focus. Um, and again, I'm using old book pages and old music pages from my stash. Um, these are the originals. Um, I have a lot, so I thought uh, it probably wouldn't hurt to use some of the originals. They're just so wonderful <laughs> to glue on. Um, they just become one with the background. It's really awesome. Um, I have a lot and I did photocopy these so I do have um, copies of these these old um, music pages and book pages. Um, so I'm going to be covering um, not the not every bit of the white space that you see but most of it. Um, and I'll be also um, pulling in that um, Ranger Tim Holtz um, tissue paper with the birds on it. Um, again, it doesn't really show up, but um, I know it's there and I know what the meaning is. And, and to me, that's the important part of art journaling um, is the meaning behind the paid, the background thing, elements that you choose, I, I think is really important. So again, not filling up all of the space. And there's that uh, tissue paper I was talking about with that cute bird. And then I just bring in another piece that has the nest. Um, you don't see either one of them. I think you might see some of the leaves um, in the background, but uh, for the most part, it gets, it gets covered over. But it is a part of the visual texture of the piece and so it's it's not wasted. I know sometimes it can feel like, well, why do you put it on if you're just gonna cover it up? Um, but there is a method to the madness, so to speak. So, um, and then I did, did decide once I put that tissue paper down that I was gonna bring in some um, more strips of that, um, those music pages um, and book pages. Just to kind of give it that sense of being layered it helps with the visual texture of the piece. And I'm going to come in with um, uh, some watered down gesso to um, push back some of that color. Um, I could just use regular gesso, but I already had this container of watered down gesso um, that I, uh, when I get low on my, um, my gesso, I put water in it and then shake it to get as much out as I can. Um, and then I just pour that watered down uh, gesso into this container. So it's great uh, to be used this way. And then I'm coming in with a card just to uh, create a little bit of a more texture uh, with that um, watered down gesso. I'm going to be coming in with raw sienna. And I'm going to um, brayer that out on my parchment paper. Um, and then I'm going to brayer um, it. I'm going to put the brayer straight to the page um, with this color. I do do this with a couple other colors, but I use, uh, I, I just press the paper on the, the pages. Um, and that's the sap green hue. That's golden fluid acrylic, uh, one of my favorite colors. Um, it's uh, very pretty, pretty transparent. Um, 
and really vibrant. So I like that. I did decide I would go ahead and do the pressed paper technique here um, because I really wanted um, the depth um, that the sap green would bring to the background um, as it wa I wanted it to look pretty natural um, in terms of being like outside and um, that would coupled with the grungy look that I was going to end up giving it, um, it was perfect. So, and then I'm coming in just with regular gesso because I, I did want to push that color back a little bit more. Um, so just straight up gesso with a brush, uh, just lightly brushing that on. And what's going to happen with that is the, um, the, um, uh, glazes that I put on are going to catch on the edges of that gesso at the edges of the papers and all of that and create a lot of interest. Um, I came in with this Arteza pink paint. Um, I um, had to do some fixing um, as I moved along because the tone of that, the color of that pink did not match the uh, other parts of the other elements I was using, but in the end it worked out beautifully. I couldn't have planned it any better. Um, and that was just a flash of the um, the Crafters Workshop Light and Fluffy Modeling Paste. And as I've mentioned before in other videos, um, I really like using it in my art journal because it's very light. Um, it dries super fast um, because when you're doing a journal, you just, it's, it's a very, at least for me, it's an intuitive process. And I don't want to be stopped by um, having to, you know, wait for hours for something to dry when I've got something on my mind and on my heart that I'm trying to get out on paper. So um, I really like the quality of this. Um, and there I'm going to go ahead and put a vine there in the middle. That does end up getting um, covered up for the most part um, by the, the other elements, but that's okay because you never know <laughs> kind of where it's going to go. So um, I'm good with that. And then I'm bringing in some burnt umber light and I'm going to just use that watered down uh, and not as a glaze, just watered down. It does create quite a different effect. Um, it doesn't have the, um, the smoothness uh, for me anyway that a glaze does. Um, like when I rub my, my hands over this, once it's dry, it feels really rough. Um, kind of like the gesso would feel under your fingers. Uh, whereas a glaze is very smooth and um, has almost a gloss to it. And, and I suppose that's because I use a, um, a glossy um, glazing medium. Um, there are other varieties. Uh, so there's just a close up of that texture before I add a lot of color. And I'm going to come in with a variety of colors to kind of spice up that um, background a little bit. Decided that I was going to do um, a glaze with the sap green hue. Uh, so there's the sap green and the glazing medium that I was just speaking about. And I'm just going to coat um, both of the pages. Um, and again, this this color is just beautiful. I mean, you can see it even from this distance uh, from the camera um, that you can still see um, parts of the background. And then when I wipe it back with the baby wipe, um, it just, it's just gorgeous. I don't even have any more words in the vocabulary to describe it. I, I love how it cat, it catches on the vines, which is exactly what I wanted. I wanted those to really pop out and be, uh, pretty central to the piece. Um, uh, again, the bird doesn't end up showing, but that was kind of what I had in my mind, um, that I wanted that. I wanted those, uh, vines because of the bird. <clears throat> so I'm coming in with my Ranger Black Archival ink and using my favorite uh, French script stamp, um, which you probably see in just about every video. Um, and I'm just uh, randomly again stamping that around just to um, create some visual interest to the piece. Um, and it for me, it really ties things together because I can I can put it here and there and and it makes the the spread looks look very cohesive. And there's just a close up of that. And I love it, love it, love it over the texture. It's just delicious. It's <laughs> all I can say. Um, and then I'm coming in again with a little bit more of that pink. Um, again, it was not the shade that I was after. Um, my focal points had kind of more of a, a coral or an orangish um, shade to the pink. Um, but um, as you'll see here in a little bit, I do come in with um, the sap green on my finger as well. And that um, neutralizes that pink a little bit and creates a little bit of a darker shade. And then uh, yet again, I come in with uh, some magenta paint. 
um, that is the um, Liquitex heavy body paint. And then here's the raw sienna again, uh, which is what I used in the, um, the first uh, layer. Um, and I'm just coming through and highlighting here and there, uh, just trying to bring back a little bit of light to the piece. Um, I still wanted the green to be the predominant uh, driving color, um, but the, uh, the raw sienna toned some things down and gave me a little bit lighter uh, space for some contrast. And then there's the sap green hue as well that I'm just using my finger, my favorite tool in the studio. Um, and uh, the nails are shot. Uh, for a while there, I was trying to protect my manicure and then the gel manicure just is not working for me. Um, I'm too rough on my hands and it peels off and it's just, it's just not fun. So I'm back to my own nails and just not paint at all. Um, so anyway, uh, uh, I do like to use my fingers, even though they get really, really messy. And there's just a close up of all of that with that added uh, sap green to the background. And this is another one of my favorite stencils. Um, I'll have to look it up and I'll put it in the video description, but I love this brick wall this um, that looks like it's cracked um, because it has those bits that are um, that are off of it that make it look like the the crack is going to get bigger and bigger and it is absolutely one of my favorite stencils um, i actually need to probably order another one because this is getting pretty worn uh, down it is a tcw um, stencil i believe um, but i'll get that information and put it in the description field or the description box excuse me and then I'm going to come in with this dot stencil as well. And I'm going to um, add a little bit more visual interest by just um, using my black archival ink and my makeup brush um, and randomly placing those dots um, here and there around the, the spread. It just really adds a lot of uh, interest in terms of contrast. Uh, the black against the other colors in the piece is really beautiful. And here's when I'm coming in with that magenta because the pink just was not, it was too pink and um, it wasn't going to work with um, the, again, the focal uh, points that I had picked, uh, focal elements that I had picked, excuse me. Um, and so this worked out really well. And then um, I believe I came back in yet again with a little bit of green um, that toned that down a little bit too. I'm not sure. I'll have to wait and see what I did. Um, this was kind of a, a really random um, spread, so it may be that I didn't come back in and, and mute that out. It looks like I didn't. So I'm taking my focal images. I picked two, one that says, love you always, and then the other one is a picture of the Eiffel Tower, and it's just scrapbook paper from my stash. And um, here I'm going to be messing around with um, how I want to lay that out. I decided I wanted to cut that. Um, that piece with the Eiffel Tower down a bit. Um, I didn't want it to overtake um, the two-page spread because it is a small um, journal spread in terms of the size of the pages is just six by nine. And so um, I wanted to tone that down just a little bit. And here I'm using my distress tool and it's got a cutter on the edge, which is what the part I'm using right now there. Um, it's actually like a blade in there that um, shreds the sides of your paper and makes them very distressed. Um, and in this case, um, it really tore my paper. Um, and so I decided to use that to my advantage. And so I pulled out little notches of paper and left it looking really rough like that. And I loved how it added to the piece because um, my heart around this um, is pretty personal. Um, and not really a story that I that I want to share, but just somebody that I'm thinking about, um, that I think about every day. And so um, that's kind of where my heart was when I went to create this piece. And it's it's about that. It's about uh, somebody very dear to me um, that is no longer here. Uh, so here I'm placing my elements on the page and decided to go uh, and cross the seam there. Um, do have a little bit of difficulty um, with uh, adhering this piece because it's on the bend and so I just kept opening and closing the book trying to get it to bend and stay um, but because I'm, I'm using heavy gel um, it doesn't dry instantly so it just kept kind of shifting uh, which was fine I knew that it would dry uh, eventually and stay where it needed to stay 
And then this butterfly is actually from um, Marami Small Art. I'm a part of her Facebook group, the Creative Cafe. And this, these were um, the butterflies were a free download that um, we are um, able to use for our personal use. And so I decided to use that in my journal page as well. And then just giving really a good coat of um, that medium over the top of all of that. I want to make sure that it is stuck really good. And then just cutting off the excess of that butterfly, it did go over the edge just a little bit. And then I'm going to pull back that um, parchment paper here in a moment. Oh, that's the close-up of that. Just gorgeous. Ah, I just can't get enough. Um, the When you use gel medium or matte medium, it creates kind of a glue skin around um, the edges of the project. And so I have to peel that away to get that parchment paper off. Um, and there I was trying to use that magenta paint to kind of tie in that corally color of pink into the background. Um, and then I wiped it, for the most part, I wiped it back. And then I decided to come in with my Titan Buff and um, highlight a little bit there um, and highlighted the, the vines as well um, just by using my fingertip, which is really, really cool. Um, what did it for this piece in the end and made me just kind of sigh in deep relief was um, coming back. I, I came back in one final step and did another burnt umber glaze. And that was just everything that I needed to tie um, all of these elements together because they still didn't look very cohesive. Um, they the, the tones were not the same and I'm a samey, samey person. And so uh, I really needed that to be different. So um, I'm coming in with the burnt umber glaze. And again, that's the golden fluid acrylic and burnt umber, a uh, burnt umber light, I believe, and the um, golden glazing medium. And then what I did is I wiped it all back, uh, but then I started to pounce on the piece that has the um, Eiffel Tower. And I really liked that look. It gave it that mottled look and that was what it needed. And so I came back over with another uh, little layer on that Love You Always piece and just pounced so it, it would have that same mottled look, uh, kind of an inconsistent uh, touch of color. And um, so uh, I think here is where I'm going to peel back that parchment paper. Uh, oh no, I've got the waxes. So this is a ruby uh, wax in the Art Alchemy from Prima Marketing. Um, these are the waxes I've used in other projects. Um, and this was really perfect for this piece because um, I was still able to retain the sap green color of this um, background, um, but I was also able to bring out the pinkish red in my other elements, and so it was perfect. Um, it had a perfect balance of color, and I was deeply satisfied with the results. So, And here's the part where I'm taking off that uh, parchment paper, and I have to kind of peel that gel medium skin off the edges of the pages um, that's created when, you, um, when you're adhering the papers. Um, but it's an easy fix. It just pulls right off. And I'm going to um, use my um, Soho uh, Black Soft Pastel and do all of my um, edging and my shading. Oh, I remember I do come back in. I apologize um, with one more of the waxes. This is the Art Alchemy in the Green Brocade. It's another one of my favorite colors um, because it helped me to bring back the light. A little bit of light that I lost in using that ruby color so um, it was just perfect and I just um, did touches here and there in addition to the vines um, and it was just the just the right amount and then now I'm coming in with the Soho soft pastel in black and doing my edges I really love this really dark effect that it has. I'm, I'm absolutely falling in love with it. It seems like it doesn't matter what kind of artwork I'm doing, whether it's in a journal or a card or a canvas, um, that, that dark edging is just really, really beautiful. Um, uh, it's my thing right now anyway. So, and I love these pastels. I still haven't played with the whole, uh, spectrum, but I really like, uh, using it for this purpose at this point. 
And so this is the clincher. This is where it all came together was using the, the soft pastel and creating a very dark shadow around those elements. And that was just perfect. Um, I hope that you liked this video and that if you haven't um, already liked and subscribed to my YouTube channel, I would sure love it if you did. Um, it allows YouTube, it allows people to see me on YouTube. Otherwise, I kind of get buried in the hundreds and thousands of people that are posting more than that, actually. Uh, and I did wipe back some of that dark off the butterfly wings. So um, I hope that you enjoyed this piece and I hope that you're having an awesome day and um, I hope you'll visit again. Thank you. Bye-bye.